I can't exactly see. <laughs> <Woo. Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> hey. <laughs> Okay, we're going to say thank you for being here before we pause for one minute while we wait for chairs. <laughs> they are prettier and comfier. We got rugged, so we're... we're so, <laughs> it's a conference rug. But thanks for coming in on a rainy afternoon. So we'll just like... Uh, Stani's going to dance for a little bit. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's not a rave. <laughs> When's rave? When, when, when? <laughs> okay. Soon. Uh, we can, we could possibly dig in and then pause for, uh, yeah. pause for chairs. Yeah, we should do that. Would you guys like to audience vote chairs or just go for it? Go Let's. For it. Okay, we got go for it. Good. Everybody, this is Stani. I don't know if you've uh, if you've met Stani, <laughs> but Stani is uh, he works for a small project called Ethland, and <laughs> they uh, uh, they're pivoting into a uh, an updated project called Ave. More recently, after Ave, Stani's taken on uh, a, a lot at Lens, and uh, Lens is working in the uh, uh, decentralized social media space, and our chairs are here, oh. by the way. <laughs> and we now also have... Whoop. Well. Okay. Oh. <laughs> we'll pause, we'll pause. Small swap. Oh, I can't do that one. Get you. Oh, that is bad. Oh, yeah. oh, this is better. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Let's this, start this, over. This was an example of building in public. <laughs> there is a... Uh, I'll even leave out a couple of the lame jokes. So you guys know Stani from Ave and from Lens. And uh, he's also been playing on Twitter, as you've heard, with... Uh, uh, Announcements related to a new stablecoin called Go. And uh, we're going to dig in there to, uh, to start things off. Go is, uh, I'll let Sonny run through. What is Go and why do we need it now? Yeah. Um, who, who, by the way, knows what Go is already? I think we can move to the next question. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. So, maybe, maybe we'll quickly explain um, something about Go. Um, so, um, obviously, like what, what Go does is that. Um, you can supply uh, your cryptographic assets into the um, Aave protocol um, and earn yield, as, as you have done, probably. <laughs> I know there's a lot of agents here. Um, and then you can mint um, Go stablecoin, so you can earn on your collateral as you are borrowing. Um, so it's, it's a, basically a Aave protocol, an Aave community-native stablecoin. But what's fascinating is about Go is the, the actual structure itself. So Go is made from um, facilitators, so each facilitator has a bucket that can mint specific amount of Go. And, and the first bucket is um, effectively minting Go against um, your positions on Aave. The second one is basically flash minting Go. Um, but most exciting thing is that um, all the um, reserve factors of the revenue that comes from Go come, goes directly to the Aave DAO. Um, and that's uh, interesting because the uh, Aave protocol, uh, while it's, it's something that our team um, built, um, it's actually governed by the, the decentralized organization, meaning that we uh, can't go and change the code, but there's actually people coming together and probably a lot of folks in the audience that has participated in Aave governance. Where's Mark Zeller? I, I know he's here. <laughs> so, um, uh, and, and that's a very interesting way of actually having a native uh, stablecoin uh, within the Aave ecosystem. But the biggest difference for us uh, is that we are trying to kind of bring a, a bit bigger um, or a bit more long-term vision on getting go into various different kind of use cases and especially payments. Um, and it's actually quite important because you know we're today um, here in the um, uh, place where you know this. We've, we've operated here over 10 years. Um, you know, there's a Bitcoin machine you can pay um, and, and buy crypto, for example, and a bunch of other cryptocurrencies. And Bitcoin, in the first place, tried to solve peer-to-peer -peer transactions between um, users. And over the past years, we've, we've, as a community, we're able to create a very um, resilient um, and robust uh, financial infrastructure uh, on the blockchain. So we have 
uh, programmable finance with, with decentralized finance, uh, we have a way to um, earn yield, uh, hold stable value, uh, uh, exchange value from one asset to another. But something that we really haven't solved um, uh, properly yet is actually um, how we could use um, some of these assets, um, especially stable coins, on day-to-day -day payments, for example, and outside of uh, decentralized finance. So, so I would some way want to say, Joseph, that uh, everything we build is incredible and amazing, and I'm super glad to see how many of these DeFi protocols and, and decentralized organizations have been um, evolving. Um, but the next kind of like a thing where I'm super excited about for DeFi is that um, how the hell we get everyone to use uh, this infrastructure. And that's where uh, I think um, a lot of people are here um, to build. So looking into this, digging into this one a bit further, um, I've been spending a lot of my time in this venue as well. And Stani and I were just talking uh, 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 backstage. Mother, father of three walks in with a few kids and wants to order a coffee real quick. We can convince them of the tenets of decentralization and try and get them to onboard with a public-private key pair or something. But this, uh, this idea, what does the perfect adoption look like when people can utilize the technology without knowing that they need to use it? You know, uh, what is the road to getting there look like? And kind of as, as an aside, Ave, uh, uh, or sorry, Go is a stable coin. Um, how is it structured? Is it like a, like a floating peg? Or is it to the dollar like many other stable coins have been that sort of easily... Uh, easy enough to follow in, in your mind. Yeah, so um, it's made in the way it's easy to follow. So it's, uh, it, it, it tracks the um, dollar cu currency. But effectively, you can use the same infrastructure to um, actually create also other kinds of trackers. So whether that could be some other currency or something completely new that uh, we've, uh, we haven't um, used or seen before. Um, so that element of familiarity is 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 there, um, and I, I personally think that um, to, to to the point of your question of how we get people to actually use the technology is that we've we need to create different kinds of bridges, um, and and I think uh, people in general are very uh, hesitant to changes, um, and especially because if you are used to something, uh, everything that is new might be a bit uh, scary to people, um, and we've seen this with with various different kinds of technologies. So like we are in an interesting situation as a whole crypto community at this moment. Um, I kind of feel that we are doing a lot of innovation and I personally feel that um, you know, I've, I'm innovating in, in the space quite a lot and, and there are plenty of people doing so and you know, um, a lot of you travel from uh, one hackathon to another to, to build something very cool. Um, and it, it's all exciting and helpful, but at the same time, it feels that there's a lot of people, um, you know, in the world that really doesn't understand what we're doing, uh, or feels that you know, it's maybe not as exciting or big, or uh, maybe even um, the path to go forward. And I think here, where uh, we actually need to think about it, and like stop for a second and think about like how we build these bridges with the. Uh, people outside of our space, uh, because we can't create a fascinating economy between us and trade stable coins, um, you know, swap um, NFTs and um, you know, and and send money to each other's CNS names. But if we actually want this technology to go uh, beyond our community, uh, we need to start 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 building these bridges. And I think that's where um, things like that are familiar. So if you are able to transact with a value that that represents uh, um, something that you use on a daily basis, but the way it's secured uh, for you and, and the benefits that you're getting are better, um, then I think we could go to the right uh, direction. And I usually tell people to um, build like, not build DeFi, but build just like better, faster and stronger finance, because that's the way to actually um, just build something way more way more better, but also familiar. And as I mentioned, that some of the tech industries and, and um, other industries had the similar challenges. If you think about, for example, cars, um, you know, when automobiles came um, over 100 years ago, people were actually, you know, scared of them. And uh, everyone was thinking that you're losing your job and you're um, actually, um, 
introducing something that actually is replacing the horse, which is like beloved family member uh, back in those days. So what the car industry basically did is that they started to create familiar concepts, um, like for example, that we still use today, like horsepower. So having more ho horsepower is a familiar um, terminology and naming cars after horses. And, and you have in each technology kind of like a similar um, uh, bridges that has been built. And I think that's valuable in the conceptual level and, and how you kind of like design something for mainstream. And then actually the, the, um, um, the, 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 the use case. So let's say that with, with your example where uh, you have a mom or a, or, or a dad coming and, and buying uh, coffee, um, how important for them it is to actually know that they're using crypto or stable coins while just um, making it um, available for them and, and securing the transactions with a blockchain, uh, but without making actually a big deal about it. And I think that's kind of like the path we have to be moving towards. So there's over a thousand of you here now. The hackathon just kicked off an hour or so ago. Um, so the Ave and Lens crews have bounties out there. I do most of my work with the Ethereum Foundation. We have bounties out there. If any of you want to go build you know, things that look like fiat to fiat tools with crypto in the middle, or we all have these tap and pay systems now that go crypto to fiat, but can we go the other way around? Uh, 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 please, by all means, find one another, form teams, go do that. Um, so, in the construction of Go, hmm. um, there are many different types of stable coins out there now. We've seen, uh, uh, you know, with capitalistic systems, looking at public-private partnerships, 100% treasury-backed models. We've seen the failure of under-collateralized stable coins, over-collateralized stable coins. Dai and company have been out there for a long time, but remained uh, a little more niche. How have you learned from some of these experiments? What makes Go different? Yeah, I mean, it's, um, it's interesting because people sometimes come to me and say that, you know, there's already a bunch of stable coins and I keep telling people that there isn't enough stable coins. Yeah. <laughs> so what I'm saying is that um, there's surely something already existing, um, but that would be the same as saying like, hey, there's already computers, why aren't we building better computers? Or, hey, there's, you know, um, electric cars, why we can better build better electric cars, for example. And, what I think, um, surely there's different kinds of features uh, that really makes Go unique and, and very uh, flexible as a stable coin that, that could scale. Um, but for me, like what is valuable actually looking at like beyond Go and all these uh, communities is that how the communities are managing um, the risk and reward aspect. Because end of the day, like all the... Um, now, don't get scared. What I'm going to say is that like all these protocols will look like look the same pretty much, and they probably will have the same uh, security parity, meaning that um, there's going to be there's not going to be a big difference um, actually when you are using one, let's say, lending protocol um, and or another instead of uh, the one you were using. Um, and in fact, Aave protocol has been also f constantly forked, uh, and it provides um, quite good public good. So. I think at some point, um, and I, I have this concept called uh, liquid citizen, which means that you can actually relatively easily uh, choose what you want to support and uh, um, contribute to um, as a community member um, on chain. And at that point, you have to kind of like think about like what's left for the community to actually um, distinguish itself. And I think that's where that, especially in decentralized finance, that risk and reward comes into play and I'm, I've been following quite a lot for the past couple of years how these different communities are managing risk um, and, and how they're basically um, creating different kinds of uh, financial opportunities. And I think that's the differentiator because um, if we want to build um, a very resilient, um, uh, sustainable financial system, um, it has to look um, something where there's a lot of options and choices for the users. Um, and the more choices, the more room for actually the users and the people to come and uh, contribute to those uh, communities and, and manage uh, that risk. So I do think that there's going to be like technical parity with all these protocols, but then it's up to the more of a, like what, what, how the risk management of the community uh, will look like, which is going to be the 
key dif 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 oh, I can't even speak English anymore. Anyways. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, tongue twisters. So, so one of the things, kind of bouncing off of this, um, if there's anybody in this room that I've ever uh, talked your head off, uh, uh, I'm usually going on about how in this industry, anything that can be tried will be tried. So I agree on sort of more stables, the better. We, we explore all models. We see what works and what doesn't, hopefully without too much collateral damage uh, uh, moving forward. Um, but, uh, you know, as Ave is also iterated and innovated, is there a need to... Um, I guess, is there a need for the appeal uh, for DeFi platforms to grow, uh, to change, to sort of market to more users in a way, or do they just need to be better at what they do so that these other systems work? So when it comes to Aave, for example, is, is you know, this in, is these institutional um, programs that you guys were working on uh, 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 still... Um, you know, of great interest or is growing peer-to-peer -peer sort of usership of great interest or at this point, is it just making sure that it works, it works well so that people can make use of it through their forks, through their experimentation uh, and so on? Yeah, I guess it's kind of like thinking about the audience and where uh, what, what it is today, for example. I, I, I do think um, DeFi has grown quite a lot for the past uh, few years. Um, I, I think from a few thousand people to... Um, to, to quite significant number that, that, that is today interacting not just with the Aave protocol and on various networks. Um, and I, actually, I like the fact that there's different networks and um, we don't all have to be on uh, uh, Ethereum because it would be <laughs> quite expensive. But, but also that when we look at the data um, at Aave, uh, we've, we've seen that, for example, in networks where the transaction fees are lower, uh, we see smaller deposits but more users, which is kind of of the, the the idea of um of of providing like a uh ac access to finance and and um democratizing uh finance in, in general but I, I i do think that um something that has uh, evolved quite a lot is that especially within the other community and the other other dao is that it has become more professional so uh when we talk to people that necessarily aren't the typical degens um um, you know, setting yield farms on in, in the basement, but are actually you know working in financial institutions are excited about the space um, and kind of uh, have high hopes for um, DeFi becoming more available and and used in institutional scale. Um, something that we hear quite often is is that um, the level of professionalism that we are starting to see in decentralized finance is something that actually like starts to create those those accesses to, to these uh, audiences. And that basically also uh, includes different kinds of uh, risk management, um, service providers, um, smart contract code, um, audits and verifications and, and, and protocol provisions and, and, and also development uh, work. So I, I just think that um, that kind of like a niche audience has been growing constantly, um, but now we're going more towards a um, path where uh, we see more institutions participating. And this, in fact, happened uh, during last year um, uh, before FTX. Uh, what happened is that we had a, a project, we were participating in Project Guardian where, for example, JPM, first time um, they deployed a, a fork of the other protocol uh, where um, they did it on a public blockchain network and used verifiable credentials and used um, cash deposits um, as um, assets on, on, on the protocol. So that was the first public blockchain uh, interaction for, from a um, financial institution at that scale. Um, I mean, if, if, that will, if FTX would happen earlier, probably that, that won't, won't happen at, at all. But, but, but the point is here is that um, there is a huge amount of interest from institutions. Um, what I do think is that we still need to think about like how we build DeFi and what's the the kind of main audience and and build these networks and communities that they kind of like support the more community ethos of uh, decentralization. Um, but I think um, I've never been as bullish on DeFi as I'm today, and specifically because. Um, now we've built a lot of that base layer. So we have a lot of this base 
uh, line protocols where uh, we can do different kinds of uh, financial transactions. And the kind of next more interesting step is that, well, how will the DeFi front end and the, the access point look like? So who gonna, who's going to build that, that part? And I do have questions on both front ends and on uh, institutional pieces uh, 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 that I'm curious about. But you also mentioned uh, the DAO and governance in general. Um, Stani and I have known each other in one way or another for for six-ish years, and getting decentralized governance right is hard, hence my Heath Lund joke, you know, <laughs> kind of like when I came in. Um, we've seen, uh, 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 you know, this 2021 era of app launches that, you know, useless governance tokens to completely plutocratic systems where one entity gets 30%, another entity gets 30%, you sell 30% of the tokens, and then you vote with the tokens. You know, how have you guys learned over time, um, you know, how has Aave governance changed in a way that will be more uh, conducive to incentivizing participation, to seeing actual distribution amongst token holders, um, and people taking leadership positions within? Yeah, it's a fascinating question because um, the whole question of like the, the governance and how it should look like it really reflects what the underlying uh, kind of like a scope is. You know, in 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 Aave community, the scope is quite um, simple. It's the Aave protocol um, and things that happen in the community. So many of, for example, the, the bounties that you mentioned um, that are coming from Aave Grants DAO, uh, those are capital allocations from the um, Ava DAO uh, as well. So the, the, there's kind of like a uh, quite relatively clear scope. Um, what is um, difficult for Ava DAO is that um, if you compare it to other protocols in, in Ava, you have this component of collateralization. So um, there's a certain amount of risk management uh, involved. And um, as um, markets are moving and assets are moving dynamically all the time, you also need to manage the risk dynamically. And obviously, because uh, the Aave community is known to be um, uh, driven by innovation, so there is constantly some sort of um, protocol updates, um, fixes, or even smaller improvements um, that are done in an upgradable way. They all cause uh, risk. So in, in some perspective, there's, there's this kind of like a human error, error involved um, as well. And I'm surprised how um, the Aave DAO, but also like uh, looking at a few other communities, how well they've actually managed the risk given that you know you have a bunch of people uh, across the world coming together, um, voting on different kinds of decisions and, and actually make it work better than you know the tradi traditional finance. Um, and probably most of the people there are and across DeFi are without a financial degree. So... I think that's an uh, amazing accomplishment. Mm. Um, but, I, but I do think that uh, it, it's really like a question of like what kind of things should be governed and, and how, what, like even maybe in the, in the beginning you probably want to think about like how do you go towards progressive decentralization and this is the very typical playbook that Aave has followed. And then... Um, Maybe the next step is that what is this, what what are the steps to follow to um, also on governance? So how do you get rid of governance in in things where it doesn't um, provide the value or it adds risk that comes that happens constantly? So there's kind of like those two paths that has to be taken into consideration. So you need governance, but also you also need to know where not to apply governance as well. Yeah, uh, I guess we, this is how we get to ossification within these systems, or at least governance minimalism. But um, so you also mentioned a few answers ago the word front ends, which gave me this thought. On uh, I had this conversation yesterday with someone here. Um, when we think about the different types of parties that we want to use systems like these, you know, you guys have probably all heard. Uh, at some point or another, some other large uh, uh, DeFi application, maybe they have to track some things on their normal front end because of uh, regulatory requirement. Maybe even someday, some groups or others will be forced to KYC you on the normal front end. This is because you, know, you might have an entity where some developers work and the entity owns the URL. 
And, um, you know, in order to, for them to be compliant, then they need to follow whatever jurisdictions, you know, compliance requires. But at the root level, we have these contracts um, that we've built that kind of serve the world. Um, as far as, you know, given everything that's happened regulatorily recently, and there's been more and more pressure on the industry, when you think about the future and adoption of this technology, is it possible for us to get to a point where, um, uh, 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 let's say the enterprise side and the, the users here can all be utilizing the same contracts even if they have different entrance points, entrance points for, let's say, institutions to use Go versus these two to liquidity provide? Um, or is there still some kind of a need to divide the intranets from the internets where, you know, the, the, we see some sort of large financial institutions, for example, um, that are only able to onboard if you have the right certification from a company. Um, so, so where do you see this going in the future as far as who can participate in these systems? Will everybody be able to use the same thing? Um, or will we kind of need to divide as we go to uh, the use case depending? Yeah, I mean, short answer is uh, yes, that... Um, uh, kind of like like you know all roads will come together I, I think that's you know that's the vision um, I think quite a lot of people share uh, in in this uh, community um, I also think that it's also at this stage uh, important because we're we're building uh, d5 from the public good perspective um, so so like our kind of vision is that um, our protocol becomes um, enough evolved that you know it's it's just um, there and can serve on any network that that is um, a available and and it provides access to to everyone and and that's the the beauty of uh, decentralized uh, systems and, and kind of like permissionless access that it's it really functions in a net new, neutral way so you know a, a person from one part of the world gets the same uh, treatment as a person another part of the world and that's very important when it comes to uh, finance and. Um, but also, I, I know that you know once we have a good public, good infrastructure, what's also fascinating is that you know what you can actually build on top that might be um, some sort of um, tailored versions of uh, what you can actually uh, create and, and optimize. Um, so I think these both things uh, will exist in parallel. Uh, but I think like the, the the main mission is to have a um, public first facing uh, financial infrastructure that's not really owned by um, any or like a group of uh, people or entities. And I think like internet started this way. So, you know, we had a very um, decentralized um, idea of, of what the internet should be and it centralized very quickly because, you know, it's, it's very easier to use a service, service provider um, and, you know, today when we look at internet in general, you know, it's, it's basically um, run by uh, big companies, so the big tech. And our kind of like a goal is also to say that um, internet needs to be more um, uh, equitable and democratic. So there should be DAOs, there should be uh, users who have a stake and they're able to have ownership of the networks they use daily basis. But there should be still companies because um, they do some things um, quite efficiently. So. But the, the balance that we have now on the internet um, and also in the financial uh, infrastructure um, isn't really equitable at the moment and fair. And, and that's why that public infrastructure, um, finance as public infrastructure is, is the main goal. Um, and then I don't really care about what people build. <laughs> um, this might be an easy one, but uh, I'm covered in uh, uh, optimism stuff with my pin and my bright red socks and one of the Ave bounties I think related to deploying uh, 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 something on uh, optimism and on L2s. Um, as people do move throughout, uh, tying it back to the hackathon again, from uh, 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 one layer two to another, some point layer threes, side chains, everybody's everything is EVM based, um, which is great. Um, do we? Do you have any worries about um, you know liquidity depth beneath them, or are we able to tie these systems together relatively soon through efficient bridging and whatnot? Yeah, um, I, I, I think the uh, I, I think the, the security aspect is still kind of like a concern to me when it comes to like. So don't get me wrong, I, I'm a big fan of layer twos and and um, um, uh, ZK rollups and, and optimistic rollups, 
but I, but I think it's that we're we're going very quickly towards um, utilizing these networks, um, and I even in, when when we look at kind of like the 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 amounts of um, assets that are uh, going to layer twos, that's quite significant. And what I think is that um, uh, the um, the infrastructure there from security perspective isn't uh, necessarily uh, complete. So I kind of like a feel that we're going too fast and we should slow down. And I I, I, I think like you can do more innovation on layer twos, um, but like the, the the mainnet has a lot of uh, value, even just like securing assets and not only storing hashes. But down the line, we, we, we're going to go to a path where layer twos have um, uh, in, incredible tech um, and, and actually you can transact there with a relatively low cost. And I think that's where things become interesting because um, if you can actually derive that uh, layer one security um, into a, a roll-up and have low transaction fees, that actually opens um, a completely new use cases. And even in finance, and I think something that I personally would love to see uh, is kind of like a use cases uh, regarding um, that front-end infrastructure of, of payments and settlements between people, uh, and even in even more innovative way than we maybe have uh, used to in, in the past when we are you know, buying a cup of coffee, or um, I would definitely want to see some um, exciting ways to actually pay and reward uh, users. Um, and, but I, I do think that like, if, if, if I would build something today, uh, probably like I would just go to the layer two and deploy there or something instead of Ethereum because you know the costs are lower, you get more users, um, more users means more feedback, better product, uh, better protocol. Uh, I think that's where that's probably will be my playbook. Yeah, the settlement to the main chain is sort of the game changer in all of this because you can go use an EVM copy anywhere, but if we remove the the uh, you know attack vector of it not having its World War III proof security, then things become a bit more funky. Do you think that the L2s become a bit more use case specific over time? Like if Go succeeds in a major way, could you see a Go specific L2 where every application kind of, you know, sinks to the same place before it goes back to this layer one? Or will it kind of continue to live in whichever ecosystem becomes the DeFi home is kind of in one place, whereas the social media home is kind of in another? Yeah, I mean, um, looking at the uh, past, the Aave protocol is deployed in multiple networks. So, and um, I think it's probably one of the rarest protocols where you have actually cross-chain governance, uh, meaning that um, you know if um, uh, let's say uh, Mark Zeller from Aave Chan Initiative, if he does a proposal on, um, which is a community member in Aave, does a proposal on um, on uh, the uh, Polygon network to change some of the risk parameters. Um, users, the token holders on Ethereum network, they can actually vote on that proposal and there's a cross-chain messaging. Um, and this was actually available before many of the cross-chain messaging uh, protocols were uh, built, um, but just the, the use case was the, the, the uh, cross-chain governance uh, perspective. Um, and I think there's value on being a bit everywhere because I feel that like every network has, has its own community and kind of like a own uh, vision and it brings that kind of like a financial layer there too. And you know, um, Aave protocol is an empowering technology. So the idea of it is to um, enable users to do something else. Um, you know, I, you probably, some of you were during DeFi summer, you were borrowing things from Aave to farm something else. But um, the, the idea is that it's enabling technology. Um, down the line, I could see some value if there is like a specific um, network dedicated to specific Go transactions that have uh, uh, very high um, velocity and throughput. And I think that that's basically what something like payments are. Because the thing about payments, it, it's not just like going and buying a cup of coffee. That, like, that's a crypto specific problem that we're trying to solve. Like we're in so baby steps. But if you go down the line, like how do you actually settle payments in you know, uh, microseconds and you know, have lot of finality there and a and, and lot of scale. And, and that's where things become uh, quite interesting. So in those kind of use cases, I would see definitely could be exciting. Um, we have just a couple of minutes left and I still hope one of you does build this uh, uh, fiat to token stablecoin mechanism. So 
find one another afterwards. But uh, 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 there is a little bit of time for audience Q&A. So take like four seconds to think about it. Okay. And yep, so that didn't take very long. Uh, 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 we've got time for just a couple and we'll see where it goes. And your name first, if you can. If it's not on, you can shout it. Legion score. Yeah. If you, if you speak out loud, I can repeat the question. So the question from Rick was uh, 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 that there's some concern that he's got about um, reliance on external factors and asked if there was potential for something like an Oracle-less Ave V4. Uh, feel free to go into context about, you know, the, for those that are newer here, uh, uh, what a little bit of this means, uh, the use of oracles and so on and so forth. Yeah, I mean, um, as I mentioned previously, that's... Um, uh, the Aave, um, the, the the kind of like business model of the Aave protocol is is quite um, unique because you have this idea of collateralization, um, uh, and and to understand what's the collateralization. So if you supply certain amount of cryptographic assets and and um, you you borrow liquidity, let's say stable coins, um, uh, you kind of need to price these assets, um, and the way. Uh, we have solved the, the, the problem in, in, in uh, DeFi is that we rely on smart contracts that post uh, feeds uh, that you can fetch those, those price feeds um, and, and have a, a working system. Now, the issue with oracles is that you know, it does uh, increase or introduce um, centralized um, also failure point. And I think the, the, um, some of the Oracle providers, uh, Chainlink is, is quite widely used. In decentralized finance, they've done a lot of work um, in terms of mitigating various kinds of risks um, and being battle tested in various moments. But the, the, I think the kind of like a challenge is that um, the whole space is relying pretty much on Chainlink. And now what people are th thinking um, in DeFi is that, well, how do you actually can be less um, relying on one entity or how you could actually um, even create something better. So I, I, I personally think there's different ways you could actually build alternative systems, but I think like the, the, the first step is to how you can actually decentralize or diversify that, that risk that you have from oracles. And I think there's enough liquidity in decentralized finance is that you, you could actually uh, make the economics work because if the economics doesn't work, then it's very hard to make this all price feeds to, to, to work. And I think there's decent amount of um, new market uh, entries coming from Oracle providers. Uh, I think there was uh, one prism called this API tree and there's probably a couple of other ones. So it's a space like if you really want to in a way, it's, um, that's a lot of upside there because I think there's, there's definitely innovation that, that is needed. Cool. Um, so since we've got less than a minute left, I just wanted to say on a personal note. Okay, go for it. <laughs> yeah, sorry. Uh, one more question. Uh, I'm curious, do you think that the existing tendency to be, uh, build more and more stable coins uh, proves that uh, crypto tokens did not become a real money in terms of these money functions like medium of exchange, unit of account, um, and uh, yeah. So, and uh, if no, then uh, what's the reason to like, and what's the future of stable coins if uh, like crypto tokens would become a real money, like for micropayments and all the other utilities, like which we use money for? Yeah, I mean, this is a very good question because like. Um, um, you know, there are a lot of people here and, and also I, I personally believe like, you know, it is also ultrasound money in, in some ways. And, and uh, like the, the idea is that, you know, you could use just the um, accounting unit of a blockchain to settle, let's say, payment transactions and whatnot. I guess like um, you could do that and that's been available for quite a long time. Uh, you know, if, if, if you don't have to pay a lot of transaction fees, right? I think the, the one of the challenges is that uh, the actual value of that uh, unit is fluctuating quite a lot. So I think, especially when we, I was talking about in the beginning of the talk about um, the fact that we need to build bridges 
if you want to get more uh, adoption of, let's say, stable coins into uh, the internet payments infrastructure, which is actually a huge opportunity because if you, if you think about like um, uh, the Stripes and PayPal's of the world, how, how much and visas and credit cards traction there is, um, I, I, I think that um, having some sort of a stable value is, is important for people. Um, especially when you are settling transactions or you're earning, for example, salary. But, you know, even with the national currencies, it's not really happening in every jurisdiction. You know, we, if you go as far as Argentina, you know, the inflation might be 50% uh, there, meaning that whatever you earn in a half a year, um, you can lose it, um, lose the value. And, and that's another side of, of, of the coin and, and, and the problem. But I do believe if, if there is some sort of a accounting unit that is widely used, that could stabilize um, down the line. And also there's the third thing that, the, you know, stable coins, they don't need to track actually a, a, a currency that is uh, somewhere in an economy, um, but they could actually track something else um, that, that is more, uh, you know, interesting for, for the day-to-day um, uh, -day usage or, or like economy as well. All right, we are out of time. I did just want to say that Stani has a lot going on at the moment. Uh, he's, he's been active on Twitter about some big life changes that are some coming soon. So I want to say thank you so much for taking the time to, to, to be here. We've been trying to uh, 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 grow a new community and a new big event in the Ethereum ecosystem here in Prague. We're, we're luckier than most blockchain ecosystems to have things like, you know, ETHCC is run by Ethereum France, DevCon is Ethereum Foundation, Denver is by Denver, Prague is from Parallel Nipolis and Duct Tape Productions, and on and on and on and, and on. Raves are by Aves. Raves are by Ave. <laughs> and we have this, this real uh, uh, distributed element um, that uh, you know, ETH Planet, EdCon, I, I could I could roll them all out, but it's um, it's 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 the more of these we can grow, the stronger the ecosystem you know is. And to Ave and to Lens, thank you for your support, even during your busiest life moments. Congratulations, and thank you all so much. Thank you.